Okay, so we've looked at a lot of the trade-offs people make in terms of the budget, uh, but of course, the most fundamental cost of all is you have to get whatever you've built into space. Yeah, that doesn't and as change. we've seen, that's a large fraction of the cost and also drives many of the other costs. That's because, right. first of all, if you've got a rocket that's shaking and putting it in low orbit is very expensive, that's going to affect other things. That's right. And there's no point in putting a $2 rocket up with a million dollar launch. Exactly. And no point of putting a $2 satellite up on a million dollar rocket. Uh, so the, this is kind of ends up being this thing that we have to focus on because it's the one universal that factors in, as you said, to all of these costs. And in fact, a rocket itself has its own cost. Uh, United Launch Alliance uh, put out this great graphic on uh, social media um, where they said, all right, here are the different types of rockets. And again, remember, we looked at how some of these rockets worked in the last section. But they, too, have their own costs and limitations that go into it. Um, so in fact, if we see here the first stage, uh, which is often uh, sometimes this liquid engine, a lot of it is just the engine itself. The, over half the cost is just building the physical engine, then the structures, the gas actually, and the fuel, relatively small cost. It's actually all the physics and engineering that goes into it. Yes, this is what people are surprised at, because the cost is that huge amount of fuel that's burning, but uh, it's like the comparing the new petrol. Yeah. Gasoline may cost a lot, but it's still a lot cheaper than the car. Exactly. And that's very much the case here. It's exactly the case. And in fact, case. that little bit down the bottom costs more than all the spit up here. That's right. And even if you then start going into the, the other stages, again, yes, the fuel becomes a bit, but it is the smallest, smallest bit. Most of it is the engine and the structure. And so this kind of ends up being this, this idea that we always focus on fuel, fuel, fuel. And yes, fuel de determines energy and weight. But the cost is in the engineering, manufacturing, design, testing of that complicated physics to get it to work. And we can kind of see how some of this is slightly changing. In fact, if we look at launch costs, so this is adjusted uh, to $2015. Yeah. So in the 2000s, mid-2000s, we had Soyuz, the Russians, and Atlas V, a, a US company. You're looking at you know, 60 million per launch to 120 million per launch. Now, this is meaning that it costs that rocket $120 million to go up. And if we think about this, if you have one satellite, well, they're going to want $120 million from that one satellite to cover their cost, probably plus a bit extra. If there's two satellites, well, you can probably split it over that in three and four. Nowadays, as we now have things like SpaceX, but we also have these other companies, the costs are still there, but they're changing a bit. And one of the reasons they're changing is becoming the reusable bit. And if we remember, as we were just looking at, the fuel is the smallest bit. The engines, the structure, all that physical stuff is a huge amount of the cost. Now, previously, most rockets would go up, satellite goes into space, the rocket booster becomes junk in space or in the ocean. Well, that 90 to 95% of the cost now just becomes trash. Yep. So the I mean, originally the rockets were bespoke ones. Yeah. So yeah, you spent a huge amount of money researching it, then you're launching your five or 10 of them, like the number of Saturn V rockets That's launched. Right. And so you have to, to get the cost, you have to divide that enormous research and development cost by the very small number launched. So the first thing you can do to bring down the cost is launch lots of them. That's right. This is something the Russian the Soviets were very good at. Yep. The Soyuz rockets was basically one family, steadily updated over decades. And so you've got to spread the research and development costs over a lot of launches. That's right. That's another very good thing. But you're still throwing things away. That's right. And uh, it's like, how much would it cost to fly to New York if every time you flew there to throw away a Boeing 747 and buy a new one? Exactly. That's right. You, know, so you go to the car, you buy a new car, you're, you run out of fuel, you dump it on the side of the road and buy a new car and kept going. Not that efficient, as you said. The fuel is the smallest part. So you can do it over multiple designs of multiple uses and then multiple uses of each individual rocket. And as we'll talk about in a second, this idea of reusability now and as many components as you can is what's bringing this cost down. And in fact, as we see over time, so this is the, how the costs have changed um, as a function of how many launches there are um, per low Earth orbit. So here, um, as we increase the amount of launches for a rocket uh, and the price. So um, there's recovering via parachute, we'll talk about this in a little bit, uh, recovering it via rocket um, and just the average. You can see that it does decrease over time, 
But you do run into a limit, and that is there is going to be a base limit that we can no longer reduce because there's a physical limit of operation, people, all those other things. But there definitely ends up being worth it that the more you launch, it will become cheaper. And in fact, we can kind of see this over time as you were just talking about, you know, we have the Soyuz family of rockets, we have things like SpaceX. So this is, you know, 60s all the way till now. Things like the Saturn V cost about roughly $4,000, $5,000 per kilogram. The space shuttle was quite expensive. It was meant to be reusable and partly is, we'll talk about it, but ended up being close to $50,000 per kilogram. And nowadays, as companies start to become reusable, we can start to see that we're going from tens of thousands to thousands to now hundreds of dollars per kilogram. And this affects it because now it's not just we don't have to make it small to reduce our weight, which reduces our cost. Making the rocket more efficient reduces the cost. So maybe we can actually make it a little bit heavier because now what I pay for one kilogram, I can get five kilograms worth. That means I could do maybe a bit more or maybe I can go to a higher orbit or maybe a longer lifetime. It opens up a lot of new things one can do in space that if um just imagine if you had a car that you had to throw away every time it ran out of petrol. Yeah. We're only going to use cars for very rare things. Everything you possibly do by carrying things around on foot, you're going to do on foot. That's right. Um, and that's kind of been where we've been at space yep. for most of the last 50 years. The, the only things you do from space are things you absolutely cannot do from everywhere else because it's so expensive. But if it starts becoming cheaper, let's say you can use a car two or three times before you have to throw it away, uh, then you might start doing a few more things. If it becomes like modern day cars, we can use them for... 20 years before throwing them away, yep. uh, then you're going to start you know, driving to the supermarket. Exactly. And this is kind of how this revolution is. And this revolution is, yes, there's a lot of physics and engineering that's go through, but the base rule is the costs are coming down, which means you can do more things because what, you, what it used to cost 10 years ago now is a tenth the price.